Hello there. Can everyone hear me?
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning, rather. For some of you, it's good afternoon already. For some, it's good morning. My name is Lukas Cioch, and this is EIT Food Innovation Prizes Competition 20. Uh, Innovation Prizes is one of the largest startup competitions in the agri-food vertical in southern and eastern Europe. We award prizes to entrepreneurs and early stage startups developing innovative products and services that can transform our food system. This month we are running online finals in 17 countries in southern and eastern Europe and award prizes to the most innovative and ambitious startups. I hope you'll enjoy watching this year's third country final and today we're in Estonia. Over the past few months, the world around us has been changing at unprecedented pace with words like coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, the global pandemic on everyone's mouth in every news broadcast. Reputedly and symbolically, perhaps it all started uh, at a food market in China and what followed has seriously impacted the food systems all around the world. We all remember those news updates with empty shelves and very long queues in front of supermarkets. Over the past three months, millions of people were pushed to rely on food banks. Thousands of tons of crops were left unpicked in the fields for a period of time in multiple cities, regions and locations. Key supplies and services became erratic. You could almost say that never in the history of mankind has something so small destabilized so much in such a short period of time. But we also saw some good things, people returning to cooking more, planting their own fruits and vegetables, shopping more locally, supporting local restaurants, farmers and food producers. What we are witnessing, however, is also a very important wake-up call, an opportunity to transform our food systems towards much healthier, much safer and much more sustainable long-term solutions. Those who think there is still time to wait simply couldn't be more wrong and big businesses unfortunately aren't changing fast enough. What the world needs now is bright fast-paced startups who are showing that you can make money, yes, but above all make a difference. The startups that you will hear from today dedicate themselves day in and day out to bringing that transformation about Having said that, it's obviously not an easy year for startups and businesses in general. Trillions of dollars worldwide have been wiped out all over the world, resulting in bankruptcies, millions of people losing jobs, and lots and lots of industries, taxpayers grinding to halt overnight. This is why EIT Food moved its Innovation Prizes competition online and to the summer season so that startups could rely on critical funding as and when they actually need it. Today, in the Estonian final, we will meet four ambitious early stage agri-food startups. This final is organized by EIT Food together with, with its hub in Estonia. And to kick our event off, we'd like to welcome to our virtual stage a representative of the EIT Food hub in Estonia, Justin Hain from BioCC. Justin will tell you more about how BioCC works together with EIT Food. Hello, Justin. Hello, hello. Thank you for a nice uh, war warm welcome for uh, for all the participants and um, and uh, the startups competing today in the in the in the innovation prizes. Um, uh, we're we're very happy to organize it actually for for the third time. Uh, this time, uh, starting in 2018, uh, we became um, with BioCC the hub uh, for EIT Food, and ever since then we've been working closely together with uh, with startups and and also the community from from consumers all the way all the way to 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 bigger SMEs and, and companies also to bring them closer to food and uh, and uh, to make this system more sustainable like the like the goal is 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 well, you can't emphasize it enough, can you? <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And um, and this this year uh, we got actually eight uh, eight applicants, and out of them uh, four four qualified who will be uh, competing here in the in the competition today. Also, and we'll be very excited to hear about them. And um, and with BioCC, we'll we'll continue to support support the startups if uh, if they would have any any kind of uh, product development needs, or or they would just uh, need uh, being a new company, they would need new connections or 
or or just kind of like uh, funding be it from from EIT food or from uh, from Estonian sources, then we would be very happy to connect them uh, and uh, and point them in the right direction because um because uh, we we we've been dealing with this uh, for fifteen years already and uh, and we know where where to point them so uh, whatever the outcome like uh, like all the startups also who are thinking about uh, doing anything. Uh, are very welcome to connect connect with us, uh, so we can point them in the right direction. And uh, and as for for events, uh, as an EIT Food Hub, uh, we have um, in um, in the summertime we're on a bit of a break, of course. But uh, but in September, on seventeenth of September, we'll be kicking off our, our first uh, real person event, hopefully, which will happen together with uh, University of Reading and. Uh, and University of uh, Helsinki and and Valio, who have been developing uh, fat modified cheese, uh, also under one EIT food project. So so we would be uh, sharing the results with uh, with the public and, and and inviting like all the all the interested parties about food uh, to participate in it also. And that's uh, a, that's a... but all in all, that's that's it from from BioCC side. I, I wish that everybody would have uh, an awesome, awesome innovation prizes competition and uh, and uh, made made the best win. <laughs> Absolutely, Justin. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And the good news, I guess, is that we have four competitors and actually four awards. In fact, three main awards and the audience award. So technically, what I could good advice maybe you might want to if you're in the food industry business you might want to move to estonia set up your own startup and chances are at least during the next edition of eit food you might win an award um, thank you justin once again great to have you with us ladies and gentlemen we also have yulia bodnar from eit food joining us today hello yulia hi hi Lucas. hi how are you today I'm doing very good. Thank you for welcoming uh, me to this uh, virtual stage that we have. I'm very happy to be here on behalf of EAT Food, indeed, uh, to open this competition together with you. Uh, and uh, I'd like to use my, um, I would say, yeah, virtual stage in a couple of minutes of it uh, to tell you more about EAT Food and how we support uh, entrepreneurs. The stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. So, um, hello everybody. Again, my name is Yulia Bodnar. I work for EAT Food and uh, our mission is to transform Europe's food system, uh, make it more sustainable, trusted and healthier, both, both for people and for our environment. Uh, so, EAT Food is an initiative that was started by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Uh, we do lots of different things. Some of you might have seen us in different projects, uh, but probably the best way to think about EAT Food uh, is a network of key partners in the food system. Uh, we're working with big food companies uh, such as Nestle, PepsiCo, John Deere, Maspex, Valio, really many of them. Uh, leading universities, University of Cambridge, Technion, uh, University of Helsinki, uh, research organizations, uh, startups. Uh, and our main goal is to bring about a transformation in the food system. And uh, as Vukash has rightfully mentioned in the beginning, uh, we need this transformation um, as never before. Uh, in the last couple of months especially, we had a chance to see how important our food system is and how many challenges it faces, uh, pandemics, rapid climate change, uh, they really push us to quickly transform the food system. Uh, but apart from these recent dangers, we'll still waste a lot of food. Uh, we still have uh, many obese people, obesity is on the right. And on the same, at the same time, we also have people in other parts of the world who are struggling from, from malnutrition, under eating. So you don't really have to look far to know that the food system has quite many challenges and uh, they do have to be solved now. Um, and we really believe that startups can be a very key part of this change, uh, of this transformation. So while we do many activities in education, public engagement, uh, innovation, uh, we also uh, do many, many programs and activities in entrepreneurship, and this is one of our key areas that we work in. Um, so we try to help startups really at every and any stage of their development, uh, whether you've got an idea or you're a young business uh, or you have a more mature company, a scale up, 
we've got different programs to uh, help you grow. Uh, so for the early stage startups we uh, and teams, actually, we have a program called Seedbed. Um, in this program, we give you the money, uh, the skills, uh, the people and contacts to go out and validate your business model. Uh, we push you in this program to reach out to 100 of your potential customers to collect the valuable feedback uh, and to strengthen your value proposition. Uh, basically, it's the program where you can fail safely or progress and grow very safely. Um, it's, it's a very um, sort of safe space for you to explore your business idea and see if it's working in the real life uh, environment. Uh, then for the medium stage companies, we have a program called Food Accelerator Network, uh, FAN for short. And uh, this program is for ambitious entrepreneurs who've got some traction on the market, but are looking to develop new skills, uh, get access to investors and media and uh, new customers and uh, work and learn from the best mentors and experts and also the partners that we have in our network. Um, this program has been called a mini MBA. Uh, and it really is a fantastic opportunities for uh, any agri-food startups out there. Um, and finally, we have a program called Rising Food Stars. Uh, it is our network of 50 plus high impact uh, scale ups, so more mature companies uh, who are looking to expand to different markets to start working and partnering with bigger companies. And this is exactly what they do in this program. Uh, these scale ups are getting partnered with some of the biggest food companies in the world uh, from our uh, partner network, Danone, uh, Valio, John Deere, and uh, they are doing innovation projects together. Um, and by doing so, they can uh, bring the real change to the food system and do it much faster. Uh, so we've got lots and lots of different opportunities and support programs. Uh, I've shown you just a couple of them today, uh, but you're very welcome to get in touch with us. Please find me and my colleagues on LinkedIn. Uh, our emails are also on the website. Our job is to help uh, many innovative food entrepreneurs and startups uh, as much as possible. So do not hesitate to reach out if you're such a person. And uh, on this note, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining our online final in Estonia and good luck to all the startups competing today. That was Julia Bodner of EIT Food. Ladies and gentlemen, Julia has been doing a lot of behind the scenes work over the last few days, just finalizing the logistics for, for all those finals. You can imagine how much work that is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, failing safely that's that's quite a thing to to take advantage of you really don't have to watch the 2005 stanford speech uh, from steve jobs to realize how important failure can be as a learning experience uh, today we have four startups competing for the country final prizes the first prize is 5000 euro the second prize is 3000 euro and the third prize is 1000 euro these prizes will go to the teams who in our jury's opinion have the most innovative and impactful solutions for our food system. Last but not least, we'll also be awarding the audience prize during today's final. Needless to say, perhaps our audience plays a key role in this competition during the jury deliberations as well as during the keynote speech. Each audience member will be in a position to cast their vote uh, for the startup that they like most. The startup that wins your hearts and minds will receive 2,000 euros. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our today's jury. We have Lee Sluter, Erki Ani, and Kai Isant. Uh, can we start with Lise? Hello. Can you Hello. hear me? Hello. Yes. Hi. Absolutely. Uh, Hi. I, I most probably mispronounce your names terribly, for which accept my sincere apologies, please. Uh, but I think it's a fair question to start with. We have a jury of three asking our competitors in a moment, probably very tough questions, but let's start with a tough one for you. What makes you qualified to give us a fair judgment who the best startup is today? Okay. I think I have a long time experience in the area of food research and development. Uh, like Justin Hain, I'm also working in the R&D company by SSC. Our main focus is to develop new generation 
probiotics. Also, we support different uh, food industries and startups in their new product development process. Basically, we help to, them to develop functional foods and food supplements, which have an impact to human general and metabolic health. Also, I have a background uh, working in the food industries. It sounds definitely hands-on, lots of experience indeed. Thank you very much. Now, can we have Thank you. another? Can we have uh, the introduction from Erki? Hi. Um, first of all, best of luck to all of the competitors uh, here today. I'm really glad there's only four of them, so there's definitely going to be a very peaceful discussion with the jury about the winners. Uh, I'm representing uh, Clean Tech Forest, which is the Clean Tech Forest owner, so the Estonian umbrella organization for all clean tech startups. Uh, we also represent EIT climate, um, such as EIT food, and thereby bring to Estonia uh, the accelerator incubator uh, programs from Europe um, that are all dealing with clean tech startups, clean tech entrepreneurship, but also clean tech education or environmental education. And uh, daily, I deal with a lot of startups, mainly in uh, in clean tech sector. And in clean tech sector, we also have the agriculture and food category. So I'm very curious to see what's what's coming up today. Uh, Erki, it's great to have you with us. I guess it's almost obligatory if you set up a company whose name is Clean Tech Forest, you should have a proper big plant in the background of your live stream, shouldn't you? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. We have That's Kai. <laughs> exactly. We have Kai also joining us, Garage 48, Latitude 59. Is that right? Hello, hello from this side as well. I'm happy uh, to be part of the jury, although it seems my colleagues are very, uh, you know, big experts in the field. So, uh, so good to have that expertise here. Um, I think I'm more um, representing than the, the kind of startup community I've been working with, like you said, Garage 48. So um, organizing hackathons for over six years now. Um, putting on uh, the biggest uh, startup conference, Latitude 59 and most recently working with the um, government innovation program called Accelerate Estonia. So I've seen, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of early stage pitches. Um, I'm looking for, uh, you know, potential and passion in these teams. So I think we, yeah, as Erki said, you know, wishing good luck to all the teams and, and excited for the pitches. Sounds wonderful. We have a huge spectrum of practical experience coming from our jury and I can't wait to hear your questions to our competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, time for a first competitor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sorterman, a mobile application that helps to sort waste based on EAN codes. Hello. Food sector consists a lot of packaging. But do we know how to recycle them? For example, do you know where to put an old egg box? Is it paper, package or bio waste? What about pizza box? Is it paper or package? Or maybe bio waste if pizza inside? There are a lot of simple questions and people don't know the answers. And the answers can depend even on location. Many environmental friendly people have confessed us that they don't know how to sort because there are so many multi packages and conflicted information about sorting. We have a solution a simple application to sort the waste. How it works? First, take your product you want to discard, for example, an old ketchup bottle. Then scan the barcode on the ketchup bottle with your mobile. Then you can be sure, sure that yes, this is the product and voila! The application gives an answer to which waste bin the product should go. And not only, it also gives information how you should handle the product before you put it to the waste bin. For example, should you wash it or maybe remove the cap? And the most important, it gives information 
What happens next to your waste? So you can be can be sure that your waste is not wasted. Our business model is a simple application, of course, should be for free for users. We gain our profit from in-app ads and product placement. And we are happy to announce that we have already two investors to cover our development costs. And also the one municipality in Estonia also gave us grant to continue our valuable work. Our aim is to be really global and to operate worldwide in 2030. We have a pre-agreement with environmental organization Let's Do It World to expand our idea up to 150 countries. We have a strong team that consists leadership, environmental, marketing, system development and programming skills. We have had a lot of environmental projects and we know what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sortermen. We help to sort your waste. Thank you. It's live now. Hello, Anneli. Let's see if we can connect. Yes, we can. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi. How are you today? Perfect. Just amazing. Thank you for asking. Anneli, you know, the, the very first question that comes to my mind, having watched your presentation, is how much did you pay those birds to sing so beautifully in the background, <laughs> stressing at exactly the right moments what you were planning to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make you jealous, but this is my home office, by the way. This and is the your birds... home office, huh? yeah. right? <laughs> it's my home office so for not... the summer. So you're not one of those people who are missing terribly going in proper office building, are you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. But you can uh, come to visit us and we have a meeting in our home office. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> are you ready for the Q&A session with our jury? Absolutely. Looking forward. Five minutes. Enjoy. Thank you. So maybe I'll uh, I'll open up. Uh, thank you for the pitch, Anneli. And also the same thing. The bird singing was uh, was a big plus there. But my question to you is uh, is actually about uh, your competitors. So how much have you like? Who are your competitors? How much have you gone through them? What are the learnings? And and what's the special sauce that you're bringing to the market? Um, we have a search for uh, for such kind of application for long, and uh, uh, for my surprise, we didn't find uh, such kind of application that I just presented. All the competitors, they um, uh, they are two types competitors. The the one type is that uh, the application you have to make a lot of pre selections. It means that you have to know. What kind of uh, waste it is? Is it paper or plastic or or, or met uh, metal? Um, and then you can uh, finally the application says that uh, yes, it's maybe this product then it should be uh, go that bin. The other applications um, they uh, predict uh, to which bin the waste should go based on picture. So you make a picture and he thinks that yes, it uh, might be ketchup bottle and it should be go there. So there is no 100% sure application that gives you 100% uh, the answer to which pin it goes, uh, should go. Thank you. I can, I can follow up here. Uh, thank you very much for the pitch, Anneli. Um, and my questions are, um, how have you defined the customer? Uh, whose problem is it? Have, have you talked to the customers, the potential customers? Oh yeah, absolutely. We have uh, talked to customers and this the, the application for two months already. Uh, first, we are um, targeting the low-hanging fruits, which is uh, environmental-friendly people, and we are 
this is the growing uh, target group and uh, the really standard um, reaction uh, to our pitch is that wow we are looking forward to it and we have waited for such kind of application for a long time so it's um, and especially the the growing uh, uh, target group is among uh, youngsters so which was even a surprise for us but it's really great that the the young uh, target group is really a fan of of our application and uh, we hope that the, the environmental friendly people also will um, uh, will um, communicate uh, this knowledge to their colleagues to friends and also set the rules for for their families so the snow roll is, uh, is starting from environmental friendly people mm -hmm. okay. and a uh, very quick follow-up question from here uh, on a different topic um so what do you see are the main milestones to deliver your product on a on a larger scale and and what are the bottlenecks that you foresee at the moment uh, we are um, uh, we are working on on the concrete model how we uh, build up the database so basically it's it's quite easy to to make the first uh, minimum viable product actually it's ready uh, but we are aiming higher so it's uh, at the moment it's quite easy to uh, to use the free programs in the internet and create uh, create data from different uh, public databases to have uh, the products uh, pictures and barcodes and add also sorting information based on guidelines of waste management uh, companies but um, it's uh, it's uh, still the half solution it works yes but we are aiming higher and we want to um, want to be part of circular economy. I mean that um, we want that actually the companies themselves put the information to that application. And uh, the information about how to sort their products comes from, uh, from companies and it uh, comes automatically. So it's, we don't have to put a lot of efforts in the future to, um, to keep our database updated, but it, uh, it's updating automatically and it's uh, synced with the, with, the, um, uh, with the our database is where the product information is uh, staying so this is uh, this is the at the moment um, uh, the the phase we are working on and we want to be we want to have it really perfect so we have a uh, different discussion so how to do it so and if we have uh, this um, this database and this logic uh, set up, then we are going to test it uh, first in Estonia and then also in uh, some, uh, some other countries. Thank you. We still have time for one quick question. Yes. Thank you for a pitch. I have a question. I didn't read out how far you are with this uh, app development process how many data collection you are in this app or do you have any any cooperation already with the industries or supermarkets yeah we um uh, we have a minimum viable product it means that we uh, we built um uh, the application uh, not a fancy one but a uh, working one mm -hmm and uh, we we grab the data from the internet with all these pictures and uh, and barcodes and uh, the, basically the application works so we basically we can uh, can use it already because uh, uh, we can get approximately 80 percent of all the information uh, all the products already without meeting anyone all this information mm -hmm. is basically publicly in the internet and we need to stop here thank you very much <laughs> Anneli, thank, thank you very much for the Q&A session. Hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our first contestant, Sorterman. And time for a second contestant. Uh, the first sustainable plant-based milk in Estonia from local produce, EIMU. Let's think about Emu CEO Maria, who has a milk protein intolerance. Maria's grandmother always makes pancakes for the whole family. 
Maria may know what milk is best for her, but if her granny is at the shop, she has to face a non-understandable foraging plant-based milk shelf. She cannot understand English, and she has never bought plant-based milk. It is just confusing for her. Here comes Emu, Estonia's first plant-based milk made of local organic produce that she can trust. Hi, my name is Katrin, and we are Emu. We want to produce Estonia's first plant-based milk from local grains and seeds. Our clients are vegans, lactose intolerant people who prefer plant-based options for ethical and personal reasons. Also business-to-business -business clients, companies, restaurants, cafes who provide plant-based alternatives. There are approximately 30,000 vegans and lactose intolerant people in Estonia. Rimi, one of our biggest grocery stores, has studied that only 20% of the plant-based milk customers actually are vegans or intolerant people. 80% are buying because of interest or environmental values. So our market size in 2020 is uh, 150,000 people. We have a strong marketing plan to make sure that it is reached. Do you remember the time when eBay sold oatly milk for $20 a package? The biggest oat milk producer from Sweden have researched that plant-based market size doubles every year. So next year we could have a 300,000 market. We don't have any plant-based competitors from Estonia, but the biggest foraging importers are Opro and Oatly. It is predicted that oat milk market will grow to 500 million in six years. If we don't do it, somebody else will. No wonder that people are becoming interested in plant-based products. If we would reach 20,000 people in our first year, we would save 4 million kilograms of CO2 emissions, 1.3 million kilowatt hours of energy and 1.2 billion liters of water that cow milk is consuming right now. This is our hemp seed milk. It actually looks exactly like cow's milk as our focus groups have said. And the taste is rather nutty, but the texture is much more milk-like than almond milk. The package design is made by collaborating with Estonian's design agent to dive us. And when we come to the market, we want to use 100% recyclable Elabac cartons. The whole milk production process is of course science-based. We are cooperating with Tallinn University of Technology's food department. No pesticides or additives as we are looking into using grain malt, which already has all the needed enzymes in it. Nobody has done it before. Also, we are the first company in the world to use birch syrup as a sweetener, which is also from Estonia. Our oat milk costs 1.8 euros plus store margin, and hemp seed milk is 2.5 plus store margin. In the first year, if we could reach 10,000 people, our profit would be 500,000, and turnover would reach to 1.8 million euros. This is only 7% of our actual market, so if we could reach 150,000 people, the turnover would reach to 27 million euros. Our next mission is a machine park that costs 60,000 euros. That's why we are here. We have won Estonia's Negawatt competition and therefore invested 10,000 euros. Our company would be profitable already after next year. We have a caring CEO, Maria, with a strong and innovative mentality. Design-minded Carmen, a half-American Thomas who studies economics and does finance. Marilyn is doing her master's degree in food technology and I will study international business, economics and politics in Copenhagen. We have all invested in our future to become internationally competent to lead the company. We are worthy of investment because we are young, we have a mission in our heart and we have a little to risk. We are ready to change the agriculture and food production reputation. We want there to be more innovative young people who would think less of a profit and more of the good that they can make from it. If we have a, made a strong entry to the Estonian market, we won't stop there. Every country has its own grains. Local production is the future and we want to be ahead of it. Environmental sustainability asks for innovation. We want to be the first in the market so it is profitable investment for the future. Now we just kindly ask for your help to invest in Machine Park and start producing it industrially. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there was our second competitor, Amo. We have Katrin joining us live now. Hello, Katrin. Hi, oh, I see and the two of you. Well. <laughs> nice Wonderful to, to see you. Well, I noticed several sentences which drew my attention. Like, to begin with, you said, nobody has done it before. That's a, always a sentence for a, for a young startup to say, isn't it? Yeah, I think 
in Estonia, uh, people are also surprised that nobody has uh, thought of it like we do. And um, we are ready to carry our uh, idea. To Absolutely. Another thing I've noticed is your executive team. It's so wonderfully refreshing to finally see four women in your operational team and only one man for a change. Quite the opposite of what you normally see. Good luck with the jury questions. Just remember you only have five minutes. Enjoy. Thank you. Hello, hello, ladies. I'm going to then, based on science, uh, I think all the elements are there for success. My question to you is, uh, you are mentioning the machine park. Um, can you be a bit more specific about the timeline that you have? Like, what's the impact you want to have in one year, let's say? Well, our mission is to become the, or to be at market in uh, six to nine months. So uh, we are planning on uh, finalizing the park in uh, three months and then doing some uh, uh, last steps in the food production process and uh, we are ready to uh, launch. Yeah. So what are the what are the extra um, or kind of additional sources where you're going to fundraise for the machine part other than uh, this competition? Uh, we are using this uh, startup uh, grant that Dunia is uh, providing. Also, we are uh, going for EIS uh, uh, grant uh, because the free money is the best money, and we are looking into using uh, investors in the near future if it's needed and also crowdfunding is a okay just a quick follow-up question before er erki uh, comes in uh, you mentioned the the big competitors so they're international brands uh, exporting all over the world so doing it locally what are the learnings that you are taking from them uh OAT has a very good uh, environmental marketing plan and we are, uh, uh, it's like, it is a good plan but we are wanting to be more uh, unfiltered and straightforward for our clients so the client doesn't uh, know what uh, she buys but uh, it is a good example how to be more environmental friendly. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I'll again follow up. Um, my first question is, how do you plan to reach your, your market or your target market? Actually, I've done uh, fashion uh, marketing for five years for uh, Estonia's uh, fashion companies. So I, I have a strong uh, marketing uh, experience and also as a photographer and a kind of an influencer. I have uh, all the contacts from Estonian's influencers and they are ready to launch with us for free because they really believe in our uh, doings and uh, Estonians really wanted to uh, be successful because it's the first company in Estonia doing it. So uh, and also we have done some uh, target market research. They already had that they are interested uh, in buying it. And we are really want to reach people face to face also. So uh, some um, some uh, festivals that are in Estonia. There are really many of them, the food festivals. And uh, we everywhere we give our contacts contacts. So if someone wants to ask something, they can actually reach straight to us. And we think this is important to know our customer and to learn how we can be better and uh, more happy for them and we're going to schools with our milk machines because the young people are the first clients for us and they will influence their parents too okay so it seems there's there's a lot of cost of sales um from your part part uh just quickly before before Kai. um do you sell your products also in other like grocery change uh right now no because this is a product time but uh, we are uh, looking into uh, coming to the Rimi uh, uh, farm tour, uh, 
performed uh, as our first uh, chain and also uh, not uh, which is a smaller uh, farm market so uh, yeah we are having those discuss discussions right now they are really interested in uh, supporting us also thanks Thank ladies you. and gentlemen that's that's all the time we have really uh, so that was Amo. Uh, congratulations on your Q&A session and good luck in today's competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are halfway through uh, the competitors of today. Uh, after the next two, I will explain to you the voting procedure for, for our audience prize. Now, time for Aqualabs, developing aquaponic components for RAS style fish farms. From Aqualabs, and I'll be introducing you to our idea. The problem that we are solving is that production of fresh food is distant from the consumer, which leads to a limited availability of premium quality, eco friendly food during the off season. This is especially relevant in countries like Estonia, where we import most of our vegetables, especially during the winter season. The solution that we are offering are smart year round greenhouses that I'll allow for effortless, adjustable production. We have a companion app that will guide the user throughout the process and a personalized growth plan that optimizes waste growth and consumption. The product we have uh, are a half a ton year production for the B2C and 1.5 ton per year production for the B2B. Each produce leafy greens and herbs with the option of fish and shrimp. Up to 200 different species of herbs and greens can be grown at any time. The production cycles and scale are monitored and managed by the companion app according to the user consumption. The business model we are proposing is a one-time purchase for a smart greenhouse. Start the price is starting from 15,000. A companion app with a monthly subscription are starting uh, at $5 a month. And we also offer seedlings, plant nutrients, and support services for $59 a month, up to $59 a month. We are currently looking at the US market. This is uh, of the entire US market, but we currently are focusing on Oregon and Washington states. Uh, we see that around one in three American households grow food and uh, we should be able to supply to a uh, five to five two to five million dollar market. The uh, value we propose is left less effort and more yield than traditional greenhouses, superior quality compared to supermarket food, and cheaper in long term. We have a payoff of around ten years, and uh, we offer off-season produce compared to food subscription subscription services. Uh, you can view Aqualabs as a personalized farmer mar farmer's market in your backyard every day. Uh, it's more economical than imported produce, and it's fresher than a grocery store with guaranteed quality, as you know where your food is coming from. This is our team. I'm the CEO. Uh, Alvar is the CTO. Seam takes care of uh, quality control, and Roland Paul is taking care of the production management. Actually, we have six people on the team, but we couldn't fit all of them here. Um, the impact of the innovation prize would help us uh, develop an MVP, uh, a P2C unit that produces up to 500 kilograms of vegetables per year. Uh, this would also cover development, marketing, and rent costs. And we see that we can sell initial system within 12 months. And from there, if we can uh, get extensive sales, we could break even within uh, two years. And this is a live stream of our current prototype in collaboration with the Estonian University of Life Sciences. Here we have uh, some carpfish and tomatoes growing currently. And uh, this has been Mart with Aqualabs, and thank you for listening.
Ladies and gentlemen, there was Akfa Labs. We have Matt joining us live now. Hello, Matt. Hi. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Ready for the Q&A? Yeah. Enjoy. So maybe we'll have Lise to open up because uh, she missed her question last time. Thank you. Uh, there are similar applications for your idea. So my question is, how does your product idea differ from analog growing systems? Do you mean industrial scale or consumer scale? Industrial scale. Uh, we are not really selling to industrial market. We are uh, branding as a luxury product for uh, house owners right now. Okay. But at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that uh, Estonian is very potential market as we don't have ability to grow fruits and berries and so on around the year. But on the market analysis, you only based on the evaluation of the USA market. So my question sure. is, uh, what is the target market? We currently are targeting the US market, but we are using the Baltics as a place to get some money for further development. We see that we can sell about 20 units in the Baltics. We need to sell about five to break even. Okay, thank you. Erki? Thank you, Ray. <laughs> sure. Um, you mentioned your, your product is a luxurious product. There's many competitors in the market. How do you compare with them? And, and why did you price your product similarly to your competitors? And how did you come up with the price? Many well, questions. The biggest, uh, uh, our margin is about uh, 30%. And the biggest uh, chunk of the price uh, for the consumer is from the construction of the house. And for warmer climates, it will definitely be cheaper, but in northern climates, it has to be really well insulated for the winter production seasons. So the price directly comes from development costs. Okay, and how do you compare, uh, how do you compare with your competitors, Natufia Labs or iFarm? Uh, you mean container-based farms? Yes. Um, well, first of all, it's an aquaponic product. Uh, and secondly, we want to have the exterior design of the building also fit uh, the target uh, customer's yard design in the house. And also for, uh, for B2B market, where we want to expand to soon, uh, we'd like to have the house uh, uh, transportable to for example, rooftops, where it's really difficult to take a container farm to. Okay, and the very last, very quick question. You said your target market is in US. Uh, what have you done to reach your target market so far? Uh, we are in uh, contact with several bureaus uh, that do market research for us, but uh, in Oregon and Washington state, uh, because of the current events, everything is in lockdown and none of them are working. But uh, we have reached out to many, and we have, we have had some positive feedback. Thanks. We have more time. Wow. Um, I'm going to ask my question then. Um, so you had your slide that didn't fit all the team members. My question to you is yeah. uh, who are missing? And what do you think, uh, you know, other than the people, six people that you have, what are the skills that are missing from your team? Uh, we are currently missing some marketing and branding experience on our team and we're actively looking for it and on our team are also a person for um, aquaculture development and for another person for construction. 50 right. seconds. Oh, good. Uh, I will ask then also the, the same question I asked before, that what's, what is the impact that uh, you want to have in one year with this project? In uh, uh, impact on what? Impact on the world. Oh, oh well, in one year. In terms of just moving forward, what are your milestones? To... 
uh, we'd like to construct our MVP within one, uh, maybe half a year. And in the end of uh, 360 days, we'd like to have five units uh, built and sold. Sold in the States Alrighty. then, yeah? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for. Matt, thank you very much for joining us and answering all the jury questions. There were quite many of them, you will admit. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, and time for our last fourth competitor of the day. Please welcome Take Assessed Solar Powered Food Dryers. Hello, I'm Margus from Take Assessed. And I have lots of apple trees and berry bushes. Unfortunately, I cannot eat them all at once. So all these uh, apples and berries are going to rot. And I don't like that all these awesome nutrients are wasted. So I started to discover that uh, what is happening in the world. So I saw that one third of world fresh food supply goes to waste. It equals a loss of one trillion US dollars. That is insane. And of course, our health problems are increased uh, to the processed food. And the reason is lack of real food consumption. And the uh, reason is that solutions for preserving nutrients are really costly and uh, using lots of fossil fuels. And most cases, as we see, side picture are unhygienic. That made has made an awesome market for eight dried foods. It is almost 100 uh, billion. And the global food dehydrated market size is $2 billion. And as we see in the graph, uh, the Europe is uh, growing one of the fastest. It's around 8% per year because our, our uh, Awareness is growing the fastest. The solution for preserving seasonal food in a healthy and affordable way that doesn't use fossil fuels is quite easy actually. Solar powered food dryer. We have developed our uh, solution for 1.5 years. We have created seven uh, prototypes. Uh, now we have solar uh, food dryer that is C2 neutral, works off grid, has simple and is simple and affordable costs around 400 euros, has calculated dimensions to avoid overheating. All three walls are absorbing solar thermal energy and the roof is producing electricity. All this we need to create hot airflow. And of course, some design will be patented. Our customers will roughly be 50% in households with gardens and 50% in industrial producers and small and medium scale farmers to meet the demand, to meet the growing demand, actually. We will create money by selling and renting the uh, dehydrators for households, creating custom solutions for industries, and in Sidekick, selling dried healthy snack packages for creating awareness. In, with education people, we have created a network, sharing recipes, and bringing and showing people how to be hands-on back to the roots in fun way mentality. Competition is quite rough actually. All type of air dry manufacturers are our competi competitors. Food case that's even bigger, snack producers, preserved food producers, and of course healthy snack producers. But our sweet source is do it yourself, a uh, healthy lifestyle. I have been to Uzbekistan uh, in 2018 to seeing what's happening in there. And they had, they had the need, but they don't have the money yet. So we have to develop European market. In this August, uh, we want to have uh, 10 solar dryers ready for renting. And end of the year, uh, to create uh, five in, uh, find five industrial clients and 100 solar dryer contract. How are we going to do it? Of course, with the awesome team. My name is Markus Kullerkup. I'm the CEO and CTO. I have HR man Michael from Australia. Preet Vernomasing uh, has a huge experience in creating industrial uh, dryers. Ingrid Hermet uh, is expert in marketing and food system. And we have advisors all over the world.
Cameroon, Pakistan, uh, Malaysia, Vietnam. But what we're going to do with Innovation Prize? We will build 10 rental dryers and organize a competition with final event, which means 10 days and 10 households. Food drying contest with seasonal and local food. And the impact should be awareness raising with uh, healthy food and gaining trust with solar power dehydrator, dehydrator work in northern countries. And of course, the winner will get the solar food dryer. Thank you for listening and watching. My name is Markus Kulargo. This is Bike Assist. That was Baker says, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we have Marcus joining us live for the last Q&A of the day. Hi, Marcus. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. Thank you. This hasn't been a very, very long wait. You are the fourth and the last competitor to compete today. But would you have preferred to be the first one? No, I, w I like to be the last one. So I, I know what's the competition like. Exactly, you have the full perspective. <laughs> yep. So just make sure you enjoy the Q&A. Over to you and the jury. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, let's start. Let's start now. Hello, Marcus. Good to see you here. Um, great pitch. Thank you. Um, my questions are, where do you plan to sell your product? And uh, how scalable do you see that it is? Uh, first of all, I would plan to rent uh, these out in Estonia. I sell them in Estonia. Uh, the reason is quite simple. Uh, when I got my first apple out of the dryer, it was so good that I feel that all, all the Estonians need to uh, taste it. So the first market is Estonia. And then uh, let's see how it will go in uh, 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 Europe, maybe we have few contacts in Sweden uh, and they have need as well. And then maybe uh, Middle Asia, as we see in the graph. And you plan to rent to the B2C, but also to in B2B? Uh, for rent will be directly B2C and uh, we hope that it will uh, create uh, big uh, awareness and that we are in the market and then we can start to design industrial uh, solutions for uh, B2B clients. Okay. And a very last question straight from the earth. Um, if people dry all the food that are, that's growing on the trees and, and bushes, how do they store that? Uh, hopefully bushes. they will not uh, hopefully they will not try all the uh, all the food, but uh, storing uh, dried food is uh, much easier easier than than uh, real uh, real big food. So I hope it will be around fifty fifty. Okay, thank you. I will follow up then. Thank you for the pitch. Uh, love to uh, to have your confidence in the in the product, um, and I'm I'm you know looking forward to tasting it myself one day. But my question is, you have a quite a you know row of experts in your team. But the same question to you that I had in the last uh, rounds is, who do you have missing? What are the skills that you need to add? Mm, right now we are working in, in um, marketing and and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, yeah, like direct man manufacturing is, is the case right now. We have tested it uh, quite a long time, different things. Now it's like the end product, uh, like getting manufacturing ready, a little bit like IKEA product, so it would be easy uh, to put put together everybody it's it's um it didn't look uh, as challenging uh, as we started but now it's uh, quite challenged to make it happen okay a bit of a follow-up question as well so uh you said that uh, your milestone or goal is to uh to do this competition and raise awareness how do you measure that 
how to measure raising awareness? Uh, what is your success will, uh, rate? Uh, no, first of all, we can see in um, Facebook and Instagram uh, how how much we gain uh, followers. And uh, how many do you want to follow? How many do you want to gain? Up to five thousand should be. Then it's uh, then it's okay. Then people will know that this is an opportunity to uh, uh, storage food and uh, nutrients. Okay, so that is your success metric. So if you win the prize, you do the competition, then five thousand likes is your success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 45 okay. seconds, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Lisa as well, yeah. Yes, thank you. How widespread is your trying technology in the world? Is there any similar technology? Uh, good thing is that there are a few uh, solar dryer producers, uh, but um, these are more uh, for industrial solutions. Uh, this, uh, the, like drying uh, boxes for households, and um, I haven't seen um, box uh, that absorb all the three uh, walls are absorbing energy. That uh, makes it uh, like usable all day long. You don't have to change it. You will just put uh, put it uh, like the main main uh, wall to the south and it will absorb all the solar energy that uh, we can get in one day. Thank you okay. very Thank much, you. ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have time for. Marcus, I hope you enjoyed the Q&A session. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last startup competing in the Estonian final. The jury will now have time to deliberate, make their decisions, decide on the winners. And it's perhaps the best time for me to introduce the voting procedure for our audience award. The link to the audience vote website will be shown right now on the screen, as you can see, along with the QR code, if that's what you prefer to use. Starting from now, you have approximately 10 minutes to cast your vote. You can vote during the keynote speech that follows, after which we will close the votes. Please go to the link we show on the screen and vote for the startup you would like to award with the audience prize. The startup that receives the biggest number of votes will be awarded the audience prize of 2,000 euros. Ladies and gentlemen, time for today's keynote speech. Ingrid Hermet, CEO of Nutri-Loop. Ingrid took part in last year's final of the Innovation Prizes competition and won the first prize in Estonia. Today, she will tell us about Nutri-Loop, their mission, and share her entrepreneurship journey with us. Hello, Ingrid. Hello there. Can Hello. You hear me? Yes, I Hi. can hear you. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? It's yes, uh, really I can good hear you very well. Hear. <laughs> it's very Great. good to have you with us. I think it's especially valuable for competitors and participants to actually see the practical experience of your cooperation with EIT and what you've learned from that and what you've gained from that. So the virtual stage is yours for now. We'll go back to questions in a moment. Enjoy. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ingrid and I am from Nutriloop and I'm happy to share our journey with you. Uh, our, well, I will tell you about our future plans, what our, are our challenges and uh, wins. We were at the competition uh, last year and we had uh, uh, an honor to uh, have the grand prize and it really helped us a lot. Uh, so, the problems that we are addressing with our solution, they are quite complex and systematic. Uh, we are dealing with agriculture problem and also a bio waste problem. The thing with uh, agriculture is that the current uh, production model isn't sustainable enough. Uh, we use a lot of synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, uh, soil is losing its organic matter and also the carbon cycling is uh, out of balance because uh, actually soils are the biggest terrestrial carbon sink but uh, we don't sequester carbon into the soil anymore as we used to 
So it's all uh, out of balance and uh, ecosystems uh, and the uh, health uh, of the people is suffering. Um, so there are some facts that uh, illustrate those problems. For example, only 60, 60 harvests are left uh, for, for use because, um, because the soil is degrading. Also, uh, industrial agriculture is responsible for a quarter of uh, total greenhouse gas emissions in uh, the world. And also the thing with bio waste. Uh, only 2% of the nutrients in food waste is being looped uh, in the cities. So there is a lot of uh, material or resource that is just uh, getting lost in somewhere and uh, we don't use it properly. Uh, but uh, we, we should really integrate bio waste into the food system. So we, have, we should have a better production model. Um, so we have created a solution. Uh, we are creating a circular motor model for bio waste. Uh, its aim is to forward all the carbon, nutrients, and beneficial microbes uh, uh, into the uh, food production system that uh, would support soil and human and planetary health. And uh, it should be done in a way that it will regenerate uh, our ecosystems and soils not uh, even because sustain, sustain, sustainability isn't enough anymore. We have damaged so much that we need to regenerate our soils now. So how does it work? Um, we work with, together with uh, different organizations and municipalities. And uh, we are um, creating a system that uh, that uh, enables them to give us uh, bio waste and we will make uh, uh, good products and, uh, and uh, positive farming practices uh, to, uh, to make uh, our soils better. For example, uh, some uh, restaurant or office gives us their bio waste. Uh, we upcycle it in uh, innovative ways uh, in our little factory and then we make uh, 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 good products out of them that we will sell to farmers or distribute uh, to the uh, local communities. Um, so uh, it's all about closing the loop. Uh, for upcycling uh, technologies, we are using uh, innovative and uh, environmentally friendly technologies like uh, uh, fermentation with uh, beneficial microbes. Uh, that is really a carbon negative technology. And also we are looking at uh, different products that we can produce that are really beneficial for the soil biology. and. Uh, we are teaching or showing how to use uh, them in regenerative agriculture. Uh, our clients are uh, municipalities, communities uh, that we are creating long-term partnerships with. Um, we, we share our know-how to them, uh, we do audits, uh, we build upcycling factories, but those partnerships are really like long-term and upcycling the uh, factories uh, takes time to build. Uh, now we are working more with organizations, event, event managers uh, that really want to um, be more uh, green or show their green image. So we are offering that upcycling service for them, for them. And of course, we are working with farmers and gardeners who are innovative and uh, they want to learn more about uh, regenerative agriculture. Uh, so what has changed during the uh, last year? Um, when we entered the competition, then we were really um, in need for more testing and validating our business model. Uh, Back then, we were really focusing on uh, municipalities, um, but those uh, partnerships are really uh, ongoing for years and uh, the results take time. So now we have more clarity um, that uh, we should work more with uh, different organizations and offer our services. Um, 
Um, but uh, this uh, grand prize last year really helped us to do more testing and uh, get that uh, uh, that feeling that, that our products are really good and uh, now we know exactly what uh, what they are doing. Um, one big win for us was a change in regulation. Uh, uh, one year ago, it was only possible to compost uh, food waste or or uh, make uh, biogas out of it, but uh, now it's uh, possible to do uh, fermentation or it's uh, it's uh, there is an exception clause in the regulation that uh, uh, it really gives us a green light to uh, try our uh, technology and uh, validate and certificate it uh, in the eyes of public sector. Uh, so, and we also have uh, new partnerships that we are really happy about. But uh, most happy I am about uh, our team and uh, the fact that we are still together and stronger than ever. Uh, it's not always easy for a startup to survive during the years. Uh, sometimes there isn't enough funding. Um, their money problems are uh, always there in the beginning. Um, but uh, I'm happy that uh, we are really working together as a team. And uh, I think the key for us is that we are mm, we have really strong vision that holds us together. We sometimes don't know how to get there, but uh, we always uh, like uh, try really hard to uh, make the next big step. Uh, to be more specific, uh, what we are doing right now, we are um, launching our product line. Mm, it, we are still testing also at home uh, to be sure that everything works uh, perfectly because it's uh, not always about lab testing. It's also growing your own carrots uh, in the backyard to and to see how this product really works uh, at home. Uh, we are also in cooperation with a small municipality, Gaila, and it has been really, really interesting for us to see how municipalities do their work. Uh, we have talked to so many citizens and uh, Right now, we are uh, writing a life project uh, with Keila. Uh, and our aim is to build first uh, upcycling factory in Estonia with them. Uh, also, this upcycling service for offices and restaurants is now ready. And uh, we have talked to El Jave, and they are quite interested. Uh, but it's the only, only the beginning now. Uh, we are also preparing to raise funding. And we are looking at uh, impact investors mostly. Uh, the, uh, I'm very happy that we have so many new prospects and partners. partners. Uh, for example, we are looking at carbon offsetting service and uh, we have partners in Estonia and Switzerland. Estonia is local offset and uh, Switzerland is carbon farm. And uh, we are really creating an uh, offsetting model for whole nutrient cycling uh, model uh, system. Uh, for, for example, upcycling uh, is already carbon negative and also using the regenerative practices to put, put those innovative products into the soil is also sequestering uh, carbon. So it's really, uh, really innovative and uh, and uh, and it's really like uh, the future for us uh, to look at this carbon offsetting topic. Uh, we are also partners in uh, Horizon 2020 project that is focusing on uh, fish bioproducts, and we are a technology and production model partner there. So it's a four-year product uh, project, and um, I think we will uh, have a chance to develop with those scientists uh, really really well. And um, there are some uh, innovative farmers and growers on board, and also one eco village, uh, Lillauru, that is also looking at sustainable farming practices and is uh, a pioneer, pioneer in this field here in Estonia. And also, there are cool like uh, Island Sound, who is, uh, who is taking uh, 
even more steps being uh, greener and greener every year. Um, about challenges, um, there are quite many. Uh, there is uh, this uh, upcycling service that we want to offer, and it's really difficult to optimize the transportation and make it cost efficient, for example. And uh, it's really important for us to measure the impact uh, for raising money and also for different projects because it's so systematic and uh, complex. But in uh, general, uh, all this systematic uh, change we are trying to accomplish is a challenge itself because we are putting those pieces together that are right now apart from each other. For example, when we want to give value to raise awareness, this is uh, also really important uh, work for us. Then there is collection and uh, people really need to uh, in order to have really clean bio waste uh, for us to upcycle and also this technology that we use it's not used in a uh, large scale uh, so we are creating like totally new product production line that uh, re it's really of course also and so yes we are putting all the pieces together that is uh, really challenging but also really interesting opportunity for her. So, uh, so that's it from my side. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, that uh, the best team wins. <laughs> thank you very much Ingrid for your live presentation. I remember the uh, two-liner from your presentation is that Still together, stronger than ever. Sounds like a perfect motto for a startup these days, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's really important. Ingrid. I think the team is the most important thing. I, you, you really don't, pers don't need to persuade me on that. The, the human <laughs> factor is the core component in every organization and the relationships people build over the years. That's a true test of quality, isn't it? Uh, Ingrid, you took part, not only took part in last year's final, but you won it. How did you utilize the prize? Well, we used it for lab tests because they are quite And uh, of course, uh, we bought some new equipment for our factory, some uh, small machinery that uh, makes uh, pellets, for example. Uh, so we re really, really, so we are ha really happy that we got that. So there is never enough money for these things, isn't it? Yeah, because we knowledge and testing, so it will always take a lot of money. You need money to innovate, always. Uh, Ingrid, what advice would you give to those entrepreneurs who are either only just starting or thinking about just starting, in Estonia in particular? Uh, well, the thing is that you have to start. It's always easy to st start, but then um, look for the right people uh, for to to ask advice from, because always smarter people they just really want to give you advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, like you, you never should be uh, like uh, shy. So that's uh, my advice, I think. And I guess not be afraid of failure. We mentioned already earlier in the final that. It's always good if you have if you, if you can build yourself an ecosystem when you can try and fail a little bit safely for a change, not in a way that makes you bankrupt at once, right? You, you, you when you do startup, it's uh, it, it's always the case, but uh, the first uh, never works. Yes, the fifth or maybe you do like a uh, hundred models that uh, in in the in finally they finally work so you know what is the right path but you have to have a vision that's also important let's not do it to you know early stage dreamers let's not tell them they have to try an idea a hundred different ways for it to work it's hardly encouraging for them <laughs> even if it's true in some cases but it also happens rarely as it does that 
the first try is the working model, right? Yeah, that's true also, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think about all those plans you now have for Nutri Loop, what would be your favorite plan, plan number one, the thing that you're really enthusiastic about? Yeah, I'm really uh, for this, to this cooperation with different offices and companies, like, for example, LHV, who is a bank, and uh, they are uh, looking for this green image, and they have really, uh, like, uh, future plans for being green, and uh, we really want to offer them this uh, full solution for the bio waste. They give our, their food waste and we make something awesome out of it, like uh, working together with farmers. So uh, the their own tomatoes uh, for the season and uh, that would be really awesome. Wonderful. Ingrid Helmet, thank you very much. It was great to have you with us during the Estonian final. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the time for the audience award vote is almost over. We're giving you one extra minute. I think the studio is really generous here because we have exceeded those 10 minutes, definitely. One extra minute if you haven't voted yet. Please remember EIT Food is there to support you as an entrepreneur, regardless of the stage your idea or project or initiative has already reached. So if you're looking to raise Series B investment, EIT Food has support programs available to help you. These can be found at eitfood.eu slash entrepreneurship. The first place winner, uh, winners from each of the 17 countries' local finals will be invited to the grand final in autumn, during which global fame and 25,000 euros are at stake not to mention learning from entrepreneurs from across Europe and having access to top quality training. If you'd like to watch other country finals, feel free to join us. All the dates and details can be found at www.eitfood.eu events. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to close the audience voting. We hope you used your chance to vote for your favorite startup. Let's see who has the biggest group of fans around from those people watching us. While we prepare to announce the audience prize winner and while the jury is deciding on the three main prizes, we'd like to share with you a short highlights video from the previous editions of the Innovation Prizes competitions. Enjoy. The scale of the problems that we're facing in our food system are huge. So EIT Food has come about to change this. Events like these show the incredible creativity that people have in the space of the food industry. The startups play a fundamental role. They take the risk of bringing these new innovations to the market. Okay, 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 let's do it! We designed this competition to find new disruptive ideas. This is the one of the best call for startup in the food category. We have on here plenty of people that really want to change the world. There's a lot of actors working together to find solutions for our project, our startup. I never seen this beautiness in project for food tech like this one. You learn from them, you also get some training so that you develop business plans. This competition is inspiring, but it's also challenging. <laughs> EIT Food is experience, inspiration. Challenging, energizing and fun. The future of the food ecosystem is about connection and evolution. The best three things of this competition are youth, networking and enthusiasm. Atmosphere, mentors and price. Quality of advisors, quality of the education and quality of the food. You will connect to other people with other entrepreneurs and you will learn what's happening in the food ecosystem. There are so many solutions waiting to be implemented that can actually make a big impact on how we see the food in the future. We want to listen to young people to see which are the best business opportunity for innovation in the food market. To help Europe build a food system that's better for people's health, better for the environment, and also more trusted and traceable.
Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we might already have the results available. And so the winner of the audience award during the Estonian final is Aqua Labs. Ladies and gentlemen, 2000 euro goes to Aqua Labs. Hello there. Hello, Mart. <laughs> hi, hi. Is that a surprised or a well coordinated fan gathering initiative? <laughs> Well, I asked all my friends to do it, so that's the way to go about uh, I think it. I suppose. Was part of it was preparation. Absolutely. Are you happy? Why shouldn't you be? Yes, extremely happy. Uh, I'm really glad we did it. Once again, congratulations and good luck with your Thank project you. and with Thank your future you. efforts. Thank you once again. Aqualabs, the winner of our audience award, ladies and gentlemen. And now time for the three main prizes, the third prize, the second prize, and of course, the first winner, the main winner of today's country final. Let's start with the third place, ladies and gentlemen. The third prize goes to Pegasest. 1,000 euros. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, let us proceed. Let us proceed to the second place in our competition. Let me take a look at my notes. The second prize of today's country final in Estonia goes to Emu. 3,000 euros. Congratulations, Emu. Ladies and gentlemen, and the big question that many of you are asking is who gets the main prize? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sorterman. Congratulations. Anneli. <laughs> wow, that's hands raised, arms raised, high into the air. Congratulations. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's your Oscars moment. That's when you can thank everyone, say whatever you please. And congratulations again, Anneli. How, are, how do you feel about it? Tell us. Oh, um, I think I'm so happy. You just can't imagine how big motivation it is for me. It's oh, incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I believe that Sorterman will be new normality in the in the circular economy. I'm I'm really I'm really thankful that the jury also thinking so. So I'm really really happy. Once again, congratulations, and I believe, Anneli, it's one of the goals of initiatives like that, of people meeting and competing, even on a virtual stage, to make them motivated to proceed with their goals and dreams. So, once again, Anneli, congratulations. Best of luck during the European finals also. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you and congratulations. Wow. Yeah, I guess I was able to predict what would happen in a sense because everyone is leaving the Estonian country final with an award. You couldn't have a more optimistic scenario coming out from this final, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank everyone involved on the logistics preparation side, everyone working on today's country final. So let me thank the jury, Lise, Erki, Kai, the, the coordinators, the, the hub, the startups, and our wonderful audience joining the final. Our next country finals will take place in Greece on the 6th of July, in Slovenia on the 7th of July, and also on the 7th of July, Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, that's essentially all we have for you today and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, thank you for joining us and stay safe.